shoulders. If we didn't have them, how would we say? Which is why I wear protection. You wouldn't even think to leave the house without a helmet on. But have you ever stopped to consider the second most vulnerable body part from random things falling from the sky? That's right, your shoulders. Protect your shoulders, it never hurts. Didn't hurt. Shoulder armor may not protect from falling lawn darts. Hey everyone, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a steampunk mechanical shoulder armor. I just wanted to show you how cool it looked with the steampunk mechanical arm pattern, which is available separately. I'll put links in the description below and in the upper right hand corner, but man, that looks really cool together. So just some inspiration. Anyways, let's make a shoulder. Start by printing out the pattern, making sure the scale is set to actual size. You can verify that everything is perfect by measuring the print guides. Some of the pattern pieces are larger than a normal sheet of paper, so you're gonna have to tape them together. I like to use my window because it makes it easy to see through the paper and see the alignment markings. I also get to see the great outdoors. Now grab some scissors and start cutting out those pattern pieces. Cutting as close to the black line as possible without removing it. I find it a lot easier to cut out the inside parts of pieces with a knife rather than scissors. You should end up with a nice stack of pieces. Once your pattern's cut out, get out your foam. If your foam keeps rolling up on you, a pair of ankle weights can be a great solution to that problem. Maybe you have a really fit friend you could borrow some from. Thanks, fit friend. Carefully trace your pattern onto the foam, making sure to mark the alignment points. Extend them to the inside of the pattern so they still exist when you cut out your foam. Some pattern pieces get traced more than one time, and piece number three gets flipped for its second time. Mark the dotted lines on the main pieces, those will be indentations, and mark the center of all the places you need to punch a hole. Just remember, though you cut two piece number sixes, only one of them gets the holes. Now we can carefully cut out the pieces we just drew on our 6mm foam. Remember, whenever you're using a very sharp knife, be careful where your fingers are so you don't chop them off. When you cut out the circle and the other rectangular-ish sort of piece from piece number one, just leave them in their place because you're going to need them there later. That's our 6mm foam cut out, now let's do the 2mm foam. This is a great time to use up some scraps. If your pen runs out of ink while you're tracing and it frustrates you so much that you want to throw it away, maybe just don't. Instead, put it in your drawer for safekeeping, because we're going to use it later. One thing to think about before cutting out all these fancy pieces is you might want to skip ahead and just make the main shoulder first to make sure it fits. You'll also want to save the 9mm discs we're cutting out right here, because we'll use them later. While we're punching things out, let's take our 6mm punch and punch the holes on one of our piece number 6s. Now we can plug in our glue gun and adjust the temperature so it's not too hot and won't burn our hands off, as well as being quicker to cool so we can make our project faster. When using hot glue, it's best to glue smaller sections at a time so the glue doesn't cool before you have everything lined up. As you can see, I've started by gluing the two piece 6s together. Next comes a technique I like to call cutting out and putting back in, but just not putting all the way back in. So we'll take the two pieces we cut out from number one and glue them back where they came from. The difference being we're not going to push them all the way back in. This is a handy trick when you're working with thicker foam and want to add some more dimensionality. It seems to work best if you can glue small sections at a time. That way it's easier to keep the recess equal all the way around. Now glue the dart on piece number two, gluing about five centimeters at a time. Hold the edges together until the glue cools while pressing down against a table. If you're new to using hot glue and foam, I have a video with tips on how to get nice smooth seams and the link will be in the top right corner. Glue piece 1 and 2 together lining up alignment points E, F and G. It's a good idea to make the indentations along the lines that we drew before this thing goes 3D, so let's do that right now. A plastic gift card works great for this because it's about the right width and the corners are nicely rounded. Pretty simple technique with this, just keep on rubbing until you've got nice lines. Glue the sides together at alignment mark A. My foam wasn't cooperating and wanted to bend the wrong way, so I used a hairdryer to heat it up and shape it a little. Now piece 6, the neck guard, gets glued so the center of it lines up with the seam along the top of the shoulder. It's important to note, as seen here, that it gets glued beside pieces 1 and 2 rather than on top of them. This piece is important because it also helps the other piece of foam stay curved going over the shoulder. Now's a good time to check and make sure this is going to fit over your super muscular physique before continuing on the rest of the project. Check. 
Use a bit of sandpaper to rough up the foam along the bottom edge of the torso piece, and then glue in piece number four, overlapping on that inside edge. You want to end up with about six centimeters of piece number four sticking out the bottom. With that done, we can move on to the pauldron. We'll start by gluing the darts on piece three and three A. You want to make sure that the ends of the dart line up properly. And you'll probably have to pull a little bit on the top part to make that happen. If you haven't already, make sure you punch the four millimeter holes for the hinged rivet. Glue the two halves of the pauldron together along the center line, which will give you an inside out pauldron, which you can then turn inside out from being inside out. Now piece five can get attacked by a gift card and a hole punch. Grab some webbing and a D-ring. I happened to find exactly what I needed in a set of head weights on my head. Make a mark 7 centimeters in from the edge of the shoulder and the width of your webbing. And cut a slot along that line. Watch out that your fingers aren't underneath your knife blade. That would be bad. Cut a piece of webbing 11 centimeters long. Sand around the center seam on the pauldron. Glue the webbing to itself with the D-ring in the center. And then glue the webbing and D-ring down to the pauldron. So now, when you want to put it together, you can take a second piece of webbing, put it through the D-ring, and then feed it through that slot you made. And that'll hold the pieces together and yet still allow motion. Now cut five strips of two millimeter foam that's 12 millimeters wide by 76 centimeters long. If you don't have foam that long, you can cut more strips that are shorter. Now we're gonna use those strips to make a rim that goes all the way around the outside edge of all the pieces. The way I found worked best was to leave the strip a bit longer on the ends and then trim it off once it was glued down. Where two strips met, I would overlap one over the other and again trim it off after it was glued. I also glued a strip along the top edge of the neck guard to cover up that ugly seam. Piece 38 might be a little long on one end, just depending on how piece 4 is glued. So you may need to trim a little off the top of both of them before you glue them down. You can now glue a strip along the bottom edge that overlaps a bit of each piece 38. Now we'll run the same strips around the outside edge of the pauldron and the pauldron extra flappy bit thing. Although those joints around the edge are quite obvious, it's kind of okay because we're going to cover them up right now. With piece 33 on the upper front corner, piece 32 on the lower front corner, and two piece 32s on both back corners. Piece 34, 35, and 36 on the pauldron, and four piece 34s on the pauldron flappy bit. We'll make some pivoting rivets from quarter inch outside diameter vinyl tubing, which you can see a tutorial for in the video linked in the upper right hand corner or in the description. Don't make those permanent yet, but you can use them to put your shoulder together so you can try it on. All right, well, there's the base shoulder armor. It's kind of the point where everything else grows from. Although we're doing steampunk shoulder armor today, this is also a great base if you wanted to do some sort of fantasy armor, like with big spikes coming out of the shoulder or something like that or something like that. And that would look cool too. But I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm gonna take this plain armor and show you how to make it all steampunky by adding some fancy accoutrements and the strappy bits. It's gonna be awesome. And you can watch it right here, right now, in this next video link, which you can click. Right about here, mate, or here. It's gonna be good. And as usual, I'm gonna be hanging around in the comments for the next hour or so. So if you have things you'd like to say, or criticisms, or comments, or you just wanna say good day, I'd love to hear from you there. Now, I highly recommend watching the next video. It's super great, and you're gonna love it. See ya.